Daniel Ricciardo's final expedition for McLaren at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix started with a fatal three-place grid drop after the tangle of his and Kevin Magnussen's vehicle that was entirely blamed on him. A grand welcome to this YouTube channel. Today we will talk about the incredulous turn of events at the Formula 1 this Sunday, as Daniel Ricciardo has been given a three-place drop because of his accident with Magnussen. Don't forget to smack the like button and subscribe to this channel for more amazing videos like this. And here comes Sebastian Vettel, through goes Hamilton, Max Verstappen wins a Formula 1 Grand Prix. At the opening lap of Sunday's race at Interlagos, Daniel Ricciardo, who has already been having a hell spell of a season, had it go from bad to worse. At an attempt to overtake the Danish Haas driver, Kevin Magnussen, up the inside at turn 8, soon enough turned into trouble. He gave Kevin a tug on the right rear tyre of his vehicle, causing him to lose balance. Both drivers might have gotten away with the incident had Magnussen's VF22 not bumped into the path of Ricardo, with both cars suffering extensive damage. This was more than enough to see both drivers ruled out of the race, a sad ending to Magnussen's fantastic weekend. He claimed the first career pole position for both himself and the Haas Formula 1 team at the Brazilian Grand Prix. Now, it's time to hear from Daniel's point of view, the blame of the whole controversy. The McLaren star explained that he had slowed down to a speed limit enough to not collide with Magnussen, but might have misjudged it a bit. The start was solid. I haven't seen a replay of the race, but I remember having a decent run through 6 and 7 and cutting inside for 8. I was having a look, but also just trying to get a break. After the break, I remember Kevin protecting the line, so I was trying to pull back in line and follow suit. I remember following a bit, and then obviously, at the apex was when I gave him, Magnussen, a little touch. To be honest, it did not tell me so much. He began to slide, and the second part was where we made bigger contact, said Daniel Ricciardo to the press after the race on the fatal accident. But do you know what's more fatal than the crash? The fact that you still haven't subscribed to our channel. That's insane. Hit that bell button and get more crunchy updates like this. After hearing from both riders, the stewards came up with this arbitration. Ricardo made contact with Magnussen at turn 8 on lap 1, which caused Magnussen to spin and subsequently, both cars crashed. The stewards acknowledged that the incident was not reckless, however they determined that it was between two cars and was not influenced by other cars, therefore it is not a first lap incident. The stewards inferred that Magnussen drove in a normal manner for that corner and he did not make any erratic moves. Thus, the stewards agreed that Ricardo was wholly to blame for the accident and as a penalty, he was issued a three grid drop for the Abu Dhabi season finale and two penalty points on his license. So with all the pushes and pulls, Magnussen's Haas team was quick to call out Ricardo on Twitter saying, Lap 171, another clumsy move from Ricardo takes Kevin out of the race on the opening lap. He has suspension damage after being hit by the McLaren. The race at Interlagos ended with George Russell of Mercedes at the top. Adding to the success, Lewis Hamilton backed Russell in the other Mercedes to give the team a 1-2 finish and reducing their gap with Ferrari to 19 points in the battle for P2 in the constructors' standings. Magnussen and Ricciardo finished 19th and 20th respectively. This crash might be the wrecking ball for Daniel's already crumbling race time in the Formula 1. Daniel Ricciardo, one of the best racers of the last decade, has had a dreadful performance this year, or since he took that McLaren deal. He is well known for his ability to overtake vehicles with ease, but that overtake against Magnussen might just have been his last, as his future in the Formula 1 has seemed shaky. How did the smiling assassin drop from being the racing world number 3 to a driver without steering? That's exactly the same question I ask myself every time I wake up. Well, to be sincere, one might agree that his terrible spell erupted from his affiliation with McLaren. After two years at Renault Formula 1 team, Ricardo joined McLaren for the 2021 Formula 1 World Championship as a replacement for Carlos Sainz, who had signed a multi-year deal with Ferrari. He partnered with Lando Norris, who was surprisingly retained by the team. Since he joined McLaren in 2021, his career had been filled with continuous controversies, in his first race at the Bahrain Grand Prix, he outqualified his teammate and started the race in sixth. On lap four, Ricardo was hit by Pierre Gasly and suffered floor damage to his car, resulting in the loss of a considerable amount of downforce. Fortunately, he was still able to make the season opener in seventh place. 
In the next race at the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, he had qualified sixth for the second race in a row. Ricardo moved up to fifth on the opening lap, but subsequently was unable to keep pace with the top four cars in the wet conditions and was ordered to let his teammate, Norris, overtake him, which he did. He ended the race in the same position where he started. Fast forward to 2022 and the jinx is still on. Ricardo missed the final day of the preseason test in Bahrain due to a positive COVID-19 test on 11th of March. In the opening season race at the Bahrain Grand Prix, the Australian qualified 18th and finished the race in 14th ahead of his teammate Norris in 15th due to a lack of pace and three driver retirements. If we go on, we might not finish today, but we've gotten the message, Daniel's career has become sickening to watch. Since the signing of Oscar Piastri by McLaren, we've come to learn that the racing powerhouse might not be interested in Daniel anymore and might not have a seat in 2023. Well, the similar nightmare we all feared came to reality in August, when McLaren and Ricardo terminated his contract a year early by mutual agreement. It seems the end has come for Daniel Ricardo's stellar career, and his crash with Magnussen might hasten it. Well, the sports industry is very unpredictable, especially in racing. Every day, new races come up, people rise and fall, and presently, Ricardo is on the falling side. We'll hope we see the super number three drive again on the big stage. That's the end of this video. Let us know what you feel about this episode in the comment section below. And don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notifications to always get a buzz whenever we drop a new video. See you next time and for now, peace.